greetings to all of you in today's session we are going to start with the intermediate chemistry this is helpful for your entrance exam or else a competitive examination if you are preparing for the international floor any international entrance or competitive examinations india level je advanced and je mains exam for nits and iit examinations neat chemistry for medicinal entrance examination Telangana and Andhra Pradesh MC for engineering stream. In addition to all these, if you are preparing for any competitive examination, this kind of explanation will be very much helpful. Let's enter into our today's session. Question number one is given from IUPAC nomenclature. IUPAC stands for International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry. Right? Name the following compound as per the IUPAC protocol. So here, five carbon chain is given. What will be the right direction? Okay. So either you can start numbering from left hand side or else the right hand side. Both the possibilities we have, but uh, there is a there is a certain rules and regulations provided by IUPAC. According to that, shortest distance is the highest priority. Fine. So for that purpose, we will see. Uh, according to rule number two provided by the IUPAC nomenclature, write the order of number of carbon atoms in the selected series of carbon. Series of carbon should be mentioned in the line. The sequence of number starts from end of the gives lowest number carbon atom carrying lateral chain or the functional group. Okay, so lowest number, the functional group should acquire the lowest number that should be taken as the parent chain. If you are taking the numbering from left hand side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will be the order. If you are starting from the 1, 2, right hand side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will be the order. Here you will get the double bond on the first carbon. If you are starting from left hand side, double bond will get on the fourth carbon. Shortest chain, shortest distance of the functional group is the highest priority. And moreover, five carbon is the parent chain. Fine. So this is the way we can assign the name for the given organic compound as per the IUPAC protocol. And the exact name for the given compound will be taken as what? So five carbon chain is taken as pent. And on the first carbon, you can find double bond so that it is said to be a Pentene. Pentene is the IUPAC name of the given compound. Move on to second question. This is taken from the Cambridge Assessment International Education. Electronic structure of the five carbons A, B, C, D, E are provided. These many uh, what different atoms are provided from these. Answer the following questions. Electronic configuration. Based on these electronic configurations for the a, B, C, D, E compounds, E atoms, so we need to give the answers for these many questions. Five questions are provided. We need to answer according to this kind of electronic arrangement in the atoms. Move on to question number one. An atom in the group two of the periodic table. Okay. Among all these, main group element two will be. Main group element two element. What you can see? Here, main group element 2, what will be the outer shell configuration? NS2 will be the required common electronic configuration. For that purpose, for that purpose, we have a uh, second main group element will be magnesium. Second main group element will be magnesium. That magnesium is provided over here. That is given in the option number C. In the C, uh, what you can see? 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, that is the right electronic configuration for magnesium. Magnesium atomic number will be 12. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 will be there. Outer shell is uh, resided with two electrons in S orbital. So that we can say it is the first main group element. This is the way we can answer for question number one. Move on to question number two. An atom with the proton number of 13. Here, how can we assign proton number? There is a logic because being all the atoms are neutral in nature, number of electrons is equal to number of protons. That's the reason why if you count the number of electrons in this so that you can assign same number of protons as well, right? Two plus eight uh, 10, 
11, 12, 13. So 13 protons, uh, 13 electrons if present the same 13 protons will be there. That is given for the metal aluminium. That is given in the option number D. Option number D, this is the metal resided with the aluminium atomic number will be 13. 1 is 2, 2 is 2, 2 P6, 3 is 2, 3 P1 is the outer shell configuration. This is the way we can answer question number 3. Then move on to question number, uh, sorry, move on to question number 3. An atom that forms a stable ion with a single negative charge single negative charge which atom is having the provision to form the single negative charge so there is a there is a simple logic behind that any atom tends to acquire the noble electron noble gas electronic configuration short of one electron is strong eager to get the electron so that it will become inert gas configuration said to be octate configuration right that is assigned for this fluorine where you can find 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So if you give one electron so that this fluorine got converted into a fluoride ion. So this is more eager to get the electron that is given for the option number E. E atom is having that short of one electron to reach the noble gas configuration. So this is the way we can assign uh, compound number E, sorry, atom number E is uh, suitable for this question where Atom that forms a stable ion with a single negative charge. Fluorine is strong, eager to get the negative charge by gaining one electron. It is converted into the nearby neon electronic configuration. That is the noble gas configuration. This is the way we can answer question number three. Move on to question number four. An atom of non-metal that forms a joint covalent structure. So there is a fundamental thing. Uh, in order to get the covalent bond, sharing of electrons are required. Covalent bonding is nothing but sharing of electrons. Ionic bond is nothing but transfer of electrons, shifting of electrons. Okay, so that in order to form the covalent bond, that should uh, that should contain that should contain the electrons. Not enough to lose, not enough to gain, rather enough to contribute for the sharing. That is given for the atom carbon carbon having tendency to form 1s2 2s2 2p2 is the electronic configuration right so 2p2 are there short of four electrons four valency electrons are there more four electrons are needed that's the reason why they're able to form a four covalent bonds in order to make a joint covalent molecule carbon is the best example for the non-metal having covalent uh, nature and another one is an atom of a metal used in the food containers. Food containers, uh, what metal we are using. So leftover only, one and only one metal is there. Uh, that is of first main group element. That is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. That is given as the potassium. Potassium is the metal of first main group element where it is used as the food container. Okay, this is the way we can answer the question being it is the logical representation, very simple notations of atoms are provided and from the data we have to deduce which is the suitable for what kind of question. So for question number two, multiple options are provided, hope everything is very clear. Move on to question number three. Question number three is collected from JE Advanced 2022 question paper. And this is the part of organic chemistry. And this is the aromatic benzene ring containing bromo at the para position. And this is CH2OH. The compound is simply said to be para bromo benzyl alcohol. This is called para bromo benzyl alcohol. Treated with the red phosphorus and bromine. <laughs> Red phosphorus and bromine when treated, what happens? In the presence of phosphorus, bromine will be substituted at OH so that it will be converted into dibromo compound. Here also you will get a bromo. R will be the compound like this. R will be the compound already para bromo is there. Here also OH bromo uh, is generated. Now the question is, 
on estimation of bromine in one gram of R using carious method. Carious method is for the estimation of halogens by using the reagent called silver nitrate. Whenever silver nitrate is added, it used to drag the halides whichever present so that that used to form silver bromide. So carious method, the reagent silver nitrate uh, treated with these uh, bromines, silver bromide will be formed. So how much silver bromide we are? Amount of silver bromide formed is required to be calculated. Atomic masses of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, phosphorus, bromine, and silver are provided. Answer is expected to be obtained as 1.50 grams, being it is the weight amount. We need to get the answer in grams, right? Let's see how can we calculate this one, how to achieve this answer. Fine. For that purpose, the product is already known. With there, uh, we have a bromo, and uh, bromo is generated in the carious method. What we are using, so silver nitrate when added, two moles of silver bromide will be formed. Uh, because here bromo is there, here bromo is there. So that let me multiply with two into moles of R, right? So moles. What is the formula for number of moles? Number of moles is equal to weight by gram molecular weight. Weight is provided as one gram so that one by molecular weight of this compound, R compound is required. One gram of R compound is taken as 250, right? So from these atomic weights, you can directly calculate, right? So that one by 250. So after the calculation, number of uh, uh, moles of silver bromide is given as 0 0.008. Then, so if moles are known to you, it is obvious to calculate the mass of silver bromide. Weight or mass is equal to number of moles into molecular weight of silver bromide. Number of moles just calculated as 0 0.008. Molecular weight of silver bromide is 188. All right. So when you multiply, you will get 1.5 grams. 1.5 grams is the right answer for question number three. This is the kind of uh, estimation we can say gravimetry being the answer is calculated in the grams or uh, in the organic chemistry. We are uh, we are treating with analytical gravimetry part. OK, so move on to question number four. Uh, the weight percentage of hydrogen in Q formed in the following reaction sequences. Again, it is the kind of analysis part, right? Organic compound is treated with these many reagents and whatever product generated that is required to be calculated as the part of organic chemistry. Later on, we are going with, uh, we are dealing with the uh, weight percentage so that it is the kind of analytical part, okay? So there is a kind of blending type of question we got uh, where we are taking chlorobenzene. Chlorobenzene is the kind of what aromatic compound. This is treated with sodium hydroxide. We are not treating any Lewis acid so that uh, the sodium hydroxide will be treated on the side chain rather than benzene ring. It is the side chain substitution. So 623 Kelvin temperature and 300 atmospheric pressure provided so that chloro uh, uh, will be uh, ONA that is nothing but sodium phenoxide will be formed later on. Sodium phenoxide is a highly ortho para directing group. Later on it will be treated with the concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid. This mixture is said to be what this mixture is said to be nitration mixture. Nitration mixture used to generate nitronium ion as the electrophile so that being it is highly reactive ortho para directing agent. So all the ortho and para position got occupied with this nitration mixture and we will get the final product like this uh, trinitrophenol trinitrophenol will be generated. This will be the expected product in this reaction. Chlorobenzene initially sodium hydroxide, sodium phenoxide will be formed. It is the you know, substitution. Concentrated sulfuric acid, nitric acid when treated, all the ortho para positions got occupied by, with the nitronium ion electrophile. Fine. Trinitrophenol will be formed as a Q product. So now the question is, this, this will be expected Q. But uh, the weight percentage of hydrogen to be calculated, how many hydrogens are there? What will be the weight percentage in this compound to be calculated? First, let's count how many hydrogens are there. Benzene is C6H6. But uh, benzene four positions got occupied by 
substitutions only only two free carbon atoms are there which are accompanied by the hydrogens so that here one hydrogen here one hydrogen and this phenol oh is also having one more hydrogen total only three hydrogens are located three hydrogens uh, each hydrogen is accounted for one atomic weight uh, so the three hydrogens atomic weight of hydrogens are denoted for three so percentage of hydrogen is equal to weight of hydrogen by molecular weight of uh, compound into 100 being it is the percentage calculation multiplied with 100 is the required calculation right weight of hydrogen just now we calculated three hydrogens contribute three molecular weight and entire q molecule molecular weight is assigned as 229 this entire trinitrophenol molecular weight is 229 now these uh, this uh, um, will be multiplied with 100 so that it will be 1.31 percentage of hydrogen that 1.31 is given as the uh, weight percentage of hydrogen in q for question number 4 1.31 is the correct answer move on to question number 5 this is the question collected from uh, Telangana Gurukulam degree lecturer uh, entrance examination, sorry, competitive examination. Presence of slight amount of impurity in the metal will change the following property of the metal. Okay, so here metal was taken and a certain amount of impurity when added, what kind of changes you can notice? Is there any possibility of semiconduction? Possibility of deformation? Possibility of mechanical properties. Let's, let's see what will be the correct answer. The expected answer for the question number 5 will be A is correct, B is correct, C is also correct. All are located in option number 3. For question number 5, option number 3 is the answer. Let's see how can we explain this one. So as already we know semiconduction. Semiconduction is nothing but partial conduction any compound having certain extent of conduction not 100 percent not 50 percent less than that that is called semi semi means partially they able to conduct the current in that partial conduction of any kind of metal if you are doping if you are adding with any impurity its conduction is exponentially increased right either you can add fifth main group element called phosphorus arsenic antimony or else a third main group element like boron gallium indium aluminium either of the impurity you can mix up so that the semiconduction property exponentially increased by the addition of impurity this is correct explanation what about deformation let me take the best example gold I'm taking the gold as the example. Gold in a pure form, uh, what will be its deformation being it is a soft metal can be easily deformed. We can't make a good ornament, tough ornament with that so that it is the kind of soft metal. Whenever it is added with the impurity of copper, it's a toughness, it's a deformation got lowered, toughness got increased. That is the way we can answer. Another example, I'm taking steel where iron is a metal which can uh, which can find larger extent of applications in uh, versatile fields but whenever it uh, it blended with the carbon its a toughness got uh, um, highly increased that's the reason why we can say deformation is directly linked with the addition of impurity one more is mechanical properties mechanical properties stands for Stiffness of the material, strength of the material, ductility of the material, toughness and uh, uh, what uh, resilience of the material, hardness of the material. All these are the part of what mechanical properties. Whenever any metal is added with the impurity in the slighter minute quantity, stiffness will be obviously rises. Strength of the material also rises. Ductility based on its percentage composition of impurity, its ductility and uh, toughness will be improved. Hardness also increases. Okay, whatever examples we mentioned for deformation, same can be applied over mechanical properties as well. So that impurity addition largely make a change in a metal in, in terms of semiconduction, deformation, mechanical properties as well. For question number five, option number three will be the correct answer. Move on to question number six. Uh, which of the following alloy is used in a solder? Solder is the kind of device which contains low melting point and uh, it used as a uh, fuse wire in order to avoid the power fluctuations 
fuse wire we will put on so that uh, if over voltage is there the fuse wire cut the circuit so that the current uh, current passage will be stopped solder used to avoid the uh, power fluctuations so that it used to maintain an, a harmonical uh, passage of electricity right what kind of solder we are using here wood metal can't be used rose metal can't be used dutch metal can't be used rather pressing alloy can be used soldering is the process the joining of metals using filler material lower melting point than the parent metal to be joined brazing is the process of joining two different metals together which are having low melting point the purpose of low melting point will be whenever higher voltage is there they immediately uh, melt and that used to separate the circuit if circuit is there current passage is uh, common it, it continuously flows if circuit broken what happens current passage will stop and the short circuit of current will be stopped that is the way we can apply the soldering and the fuse wire is the best example we can apply uh, we can avoid uh, kind of a uh, uh, electrical hazards this is the way we can answer for question number six option number one will be the correct answer hope this will be very much helpful and entire thing is uh, understandable and uh, it will be really helpful for your entrance or any competitive exam you are seriously aspiring for i am sincerely requesting you to like the channel and comment which part is really interesting for you and what kind of things to be discussed in the near future as per your requirement and the share the channel with the aspirants who are seriously preparing preparing for the examinations of any entrance or competitive exams subscribe the channel in order to get more such kind of updates in the near future thank you one and all for your patient listening thank you very much